looks like we're gonna need a bigger magnet. <laughs> we saw a ghost in the machine, so you know what that means. at the MGM Northfield and we have a show because tonight's show is taking place in the same state where the movie <laughs> The Ghost in the Machine took place. This movie is an indictment of Ohio computer stores. <laughs> Ohio police. It breaks it all down. This movie saw years before anyone else did that what if a serial killer <laughs> was put in an MRI machine and then during an electrical storm, somehow that machine went nutty, sucked out his soul and put it online. I don't know if that's exactly what happens. It seems like that is the premise. I've never been in an MRI machine room, but lightning happening inside of it feels like there was a structural issue at play. But I have to say, this movie does see into the future. I mean, this movie came out in 1993. So, holy shit, we saw some things. I mean, literally, we'll get into it in this episode. Some of the things that this movie hypothesized has come to fruition and now is illegal. So there you go. Great job, screenwriters. Um, this movie should not be confused with Lawnmower Man 2 or a movie that we've not done called Shocker, which is about a guy who gets electrocuted and uh, in the electric chair, of course, and then goes into people's outlets. But it's very different. Very different. <laughs> Do not tell the producers it seems the same. Uh, tonight, we're going to break down this movie every step of the way with you. But first, let me introduce my co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? That's what I'm talking about! How are we doing, Northfield, Ohio? No, no, Jason, not Northfield, Ohio, just Ohio. Just Ohio? Just Ohio. Don't say Northfield? Do not say Northfield. Okay, JK, how are we doing, Northfield, Ohio? No! <laughs> we can't get into this movie without introducing my next co-host. Please welcome June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for asking. Now, house lights up for one second. I want to show you some amazing costumes that we have here. Where is our deep diver? Our deep diver with pickleball racket right there. Oh, God bless. I love you that. You know, I want to tell everyone I love that costume. I am missing pickleball to be here. <laughs> and that's hard. These costumes are... In we, we were watching from the side here okay. earlier. Incredible really fantastic. stuff. Indy, really fantastic. Indianapolis, yeah, they kind of showed up. Detroit, they kind of showed up. But Ohio, 
these costumes fucking showed up. Yeah. I mean, more thought went into these costumes than the making of the screenplay and story narrative for the movie that we saw. Oh, Ghost yeah. in the Machine. Ghost in the Machine. Well, yes. you know, I was going to say not... I wouldn't... I wouldn't I, if you told me quick what's the name of the movie, I'd be like, don't know. I will Is say internet this. Internet creep? <laughs> I mean, not since Maximum Overdrive have we seen more machines come to life that don't seemingly connect to the internet Honestly. or have microchips in them. I don't hey, even I, know. If, you, are you, if you're inside the internet, you can just control like Everything. electricity. Microwave ovens. Dishwashers. I knew we were in for a rough ride when the first two minutes, the opening credits, the exciting introduction is just schematics of microchips. Oh, yeah. It didn't go crazy. It was like, here, are, we just have these schematics, and we're just going to show you for two minutes. <laughs> it was an internal... But when you yeah. just said, what, what year did you say yeah. this was? Uh, you 1993. 1993. Okay, so in 1993, to see the schematics of, like, a motherboard or a circuit or whatever that yeah. is, was like, whoa! There, everything in this movie seems as though it's like, this is the future! And it is nuts. <laughs> well, I want to start, even before we head into uh, electricity, um, I just actually want, I want to start with the basics of the serial killer. Okay. Because the address book murderer? The address book murderer. Because By the way, we have people dressed up as we the address saw, book. Wait, that was can we amazing. get house lights? I want to see the address, because I heard it, but I didn't see it. Can, where's All the, the address back. book? <laughs> <laughs> so, in the world of the movie, are we to understand that this serial killer steals people's address books mm -hmm. and then kills in order, everyone listed in the entire and address book? Correct. Well, that is unreasonable. That's the amount of the murder. The amount of people in, so, in this area, in this state, at the in this area. At the beginning, does anybody remember, who is he killing at the very beginning? Well, he's the, killing a family. Yeah, he's, I can't I remember their name. Family, but what is their name? Because I'm wondering, how far has he gotten into someone's address book? Is it the Smiths? Is he in the right. S's? Is he... Okay, everybody Tarpley. shut the fuck up. <laughs> you, go. I, Tarpley, right? Yardley, Yardley. 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 Yardley? <laughs> is it y He's at Y. Wow, he got to the He's Y's. The, way to, the police must be losing their minds. Well, They're, I mean, here's the thing. Got, there's Y, there's, these people know Y's. I mean, here is part of the problem with that is if you have an address book, you might have multiple Ys. That could have been like the fifth Y. Oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's this not just I'm picking one person or family from one letter. He seems to be going through every single name. This is what I found so interesting. This has been going on for quite some time. And the way they deal with this serial killer is so light. Like, oh, it's going to rain on Christmas. At this point, if this serial killer has gotten to Y in, in one address book, because they insinuate that, that the killer multiple has used address multiple books. address books, that must mean here in your home state, hundreds and hundreds At of least. people. This is the most prolific serial killer ever in human history. Unless he has like ADD, where he's like, oh, I'm so into this address book. And then he finds another one. It's like, ooh, I got to go there. You know, so he's like so you constantly. Think he's, you think with some Adderall, he would just be able to kill one, one address book worth of well, people? Well, because when he's he like finds. he's so easily distracted. He's like, ooh, another address book? How often does he come across address books? Well, like when he well, finds. Well, I'll tell you because it's his new software has just been. Yes. Is being sold at the store he works in. It's too bad he dies on the verge of its ubiquity. He, as a hacker, would have had access to unlimited Everyone. power. The unlimited But the truth actress. is, Jason, here's what's interesting about this guy. And it's interesting that he ends up 
in the internet. Because I don't know, actually, if he would have kept on killing if he didn't have the hard copies of the books. So you think he's an analog killer? I do. Well, you think digital life it's not would for have him. been uninteresting to him? I do agree with you because I think there was something very much like, we forget the opening of the movie. It's so sweet. He's butchering people. And, <laughs> and he punches through a frame to pull out a picture because he also keeps a scrapbook of I forgot family about that. movies. Gotta have I forgot about that. Baby. <laughs> I mean, now take a look at the news report here because I want to see how they deal with it. It's as if it's an afterthought. Take a look. In local news, the authorities are now saying that a local man who died in a car accident late Monday may have been the serial murderer they've been hunting for the last three years. He has been identified as Carl Hockman of Lindhurst, nicknamed the address book killer, because he would steal an address book and kill those listed. Wow, that's scary those stuff. Listed? Bob, do you ever wonder how many address books you're in? Never do, Kelly. It's one of the advantages of having no friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Hundreds of people are dead. If the police, if the police know, if the police know, this is where the whole movie is flawed. If the police know enough to say this is the address book killer, he's using people's address books to kill people in order. That's incredibly easy to stop. Well, whose address book is the it? The minute they right, get to Jason. one person's, there's got to be somebody who's like, oh. This is my, I know all of these people who've been killed. Yeah. This is either my address book or my friend's address book. I know where we're going next. Basic. This would be. Yeah, it's like so, tell all the an, R's that you know. This is an indictment of the Ohio Police Department. By the way, uh, I just want to point out, three years this guy's been killing. The serial address. Three Again, it's an years. indictment of the police department in Ohio. And he should be so easy to catch. He is visibly the biggest creep in the world. Oh, well, Everybody, uh, listen. Kids, adults are like, ooh, that guy's no good. But you know what, though? Here's what I'm trying to understand, and in no way I, am I trying to defend the Ohio PD, but... I am, I am trying to understand how they even found out he was killing via address books. Oh, like, right. That's they a had, hard, they that's had hard to connection to make. They would have to know the address books, and so mustn't they know the next intent? Yeah. They should have been able to shut him down book one. But yeah, by here's B. the thing. Karen Allen's address book is stolen. She's public about that, and they're like, well, he's dead. But yet everyone in her address book is dying. And the police are... Not interested. Um, I will, and I, also, I see, I guess this is what I don't understand about our serial killer. Well, first everything. of all, why address books? <laughs> like, just why? But I heard something about systems of care. I didn't really, couldn't make many connections there. But why, um, why does he also have to kill the person whose address book it is? And why does that person seem like the person he most wants to kill? I don't the, know, because the, they're definitely not in their own address book. The, and, yeah. 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 The, that, that, exactly. And that's, that would imagine the guilt. The guilt of losing your address book and then everyone you know gets killed. It's horrible. You. It's horrible. Maybe that's why people don't come forward, because they know that they don't want to be complicit. Like, you left it in the computer store? Like, <laughs> I, I will say also that <laughs> the, the address book, like, the address book killer, well, I have a lot, I have a, I have a lot. The address book killer's M.O., what he wants, like, serial, movies about serial killers, uh, Silence of the Lambs, all of these kind of movies about serial killers, what they are interested in is the mind of the serial killer. Yes. And outsmarting that serial killer. That's not what not this, this movie's one. interested in. He's just a, <laughs> I'm going to get you. Well, and my, I'm going to kill everybody. But this is my question. He has no run-in with Karen Allen. So there's like, Karen Allen's at the store. Her son no, touches sorry, the Paul, little... No, can I interrupt you? Yeah. He does... It's not interesting that he has a run-in with Karen Allen. He's only interested in her address book. But yet he says, <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait for address book. But he's like, I can't wait to taste your fear and drink your blood. 
I'm saving you for last. But- I'm in a computer. <laughs> I can taste your blood from inside the digital universe. I run around via fiber optic cables and also <laughs> electricity. I can make dishwashers go crazy. What I, is this? I mean, there's a moment where the guy who runs the computer store, they're in the dark because I guess they're shutting off all the lights before they shut down for the night, completely in the dark. And that man, the serial killer, is sniffing an address book, which the boss catches him sniffing it. And he goes, ah, oh, where did I get such a great guy like you? I love, I love, I loved that scene. I, I wrote that down. I loved that scene because serial killers are always depicted as having like weird fetishes or some sort of creepy thing going on. And his is just, he's smelling her overcrowd, overstuffed yeah. address book that has envelopes and notes. And, and he's like, this is the hottest object. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna kill every. It's like he wants to fuck it, but he, he's gonna kill everybody in this uh, this fat, thick address book. <sighs> Listen, what? I will say, after watching this movie, I, I did think, like, I miss address books. Oh. <laughs> there was a part of me that was like, like, ah, give me the a feeling. Philo fact. Oh, I have a file. I saved my file of facts. I have it. So oh, did I. I mean, I, I didn't just miss have a, it. a Palm Pilot until I was in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I had address books forever. But here's what's weird about that boss, too, because once he does know that this serial oh, yeah. killer worked there and also seemingly had access to this new software he's really been pushing, which uploads everyone's addresses, oh, yeah. he doesn't seem to be taking any action around that. He's hiding it, and I'm like, wow, you're really, that gentleman is protecting a serial killer. Why are Who's dead? there customers dead. in that store? The store should be surrounded by news vans yes. saying, this is where your the address man is who went. 700 Ohioans <laughs> yes. was Min. working. It by is the way, true. Min. It Min 700. And I'm talking, in, when we see him at the beginning, he murders an entire family. Children and this poses them. And by the way, we know they're a good old fashioned American family because they got a fucking baseball and an apple pie. <laughs> they, every they they enti- their house their house was dressed all American to a degree that felt like like this is too much. Yeah. Well, th- this is my it issue. It's like Norman Rockwell with like a bloody family. <laughs> well, this is my issue. Like I think that there is something tragic to that family being killed. We hear them in the beginning. By the way, the first 15 minutes, I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? I see a serial killer. Am I following this family? Am I following this kid's like a lotto prank? By the What's way, going on with I the mom? Love that. I love the lotto kid's prank. lotto prank. I was like, yes, give me a kid who's pulling scams and doing wait, all this but stuff. I and did, it never comes out again. It never wait, comes wait, out. I want to hear this, Paul, but just a second on the lotto prank because I was, yeah. I was actually trying to understand the, the mechanics of this prank. So he's hoping that if he tells an adult that his his mom has died and, and he's down his on dad his dad is luck, not there. His, his dad's not dad, there. That's a secondary thought. That's, that's over there for he's now. He's like, I have a lottery ticket that's I have a lottery ticket. Yes, and I know that. I can't Here's the phone number. Right, and then he's hoping that adult gives him the full cash no. for half he of it. He says it's a $100 winner ticket. Give me $50. I'll give I you the ticket. I missed that, okay. Call the number, and they'll, show, they'll tell you I can't claim it, but you can. He calls, and it's his buddy using a voice scrambler or whatever. Which never comes back. Also never comes back. Which yeah. you would understand, like, this kid's also a hacker. The yeah. entirety of this scam should be integral to the end of the movie working. The, the fake not. voice. The fake voice should have thrown somebody off. No. Nope. Nope. Nothing. Wow. Okay. And, that's but, the and then they also... The, the show. <laughs> and the show's over. You can go that's home. That's it. But there was, I mean, I also love this era of film because it really does posit that if you had a Casio electronic keyboard, you can do anything. <laughs> like, this is a Same moment. With a computer. But you know what? I always found those Casio keyboards, though, to be, have so many buttons that when I watched that, I was like, wow, maybe mine did do it. And I just the, never I explored mean, all the buttons. The Casio keyboard doing that, I'm okay with. The, all of the internet stuff, well, all of the graphics. Sure. When the internet starts 
vomiting out like grains of digital rice that that then compromise the the it's the bad form of like, the creep. I was saying that the, the, the way that he comes out corporeally is like through like clown like balloons like they look like cl- like you know it's like oh this is going to be blown onto a dog or something it's like it's like too narrow and it's like what are these what is it like oh, what are the pieces of the internet that's what it looks like, like in there paul you see i didn't know that thank you <laughs> by the way i would say i give props to this movie for making some shit look really lame like when they go to vr that looks like the VR that I did at the mall. Like, that was not an upgraded VR. It's like oh. shitty stairs, weird walls. And you're like, I paid five bucks for this. This should be more fun. Uh, but it was also called, like, VR Nightmare. It just seemed like a game of tag. It, it didn't, felt like yeah. VR laser tag is what it felt like. hundred percent. I, I couldn't understand why it was nightmares. There's, I mean, it seems like that somebody, they added nightmares to kind of make... Like, the guy was like, the VR is not selling. Put nightmares on it. We'll get the five bucks. Everyone's running scams in Ohio. We know this. There's so, this is, <laughs> there's so many. What was the Virtuosity was another movie that yes. we did that was like this. There's so many movies that trade in this kind of, you know what? We can do whatever we want with the internet. Nobody knows. Nobody has a fucking clue. We can show them it does everything, and they'll believe it because they're fucking idiots. I'm going to go out on a ledge here and just ask you both. Okay. What's up, babe? <laughs> you know what? You know, can we get a spotlight on Yeah. Mom? No, no, no. I, I, have, I have a spotlight thing to say in a little bit, but this, I'll say this. Is our knowledge that he was sucked out of the MRI machine and then went to... Oh, we haven't even talked about the MRI machine. I mean, <laughs> he was then put into DataNet, which is a hub like a holder for the internet, but he was able to go to like everywhere in town because that's like the internet hub of the town? Is that how the internet wow. works? It's like the internet only has like a localized... Well, here's what we can okay. do. And, and in, in an effort to kind of answer that question, because it's based here, does anyone here work for DataNet? <laughs> I also don't understand why the guy who runs DataNet's like, <laughs> I remember you. You guys are splitting atoms while we were pulling our puds. Yeah. Now I'm your boss. I'm like, wait, I think you fucked up that insult. Like, <laughs> <laughs> While you were a genius, I was jerking off. <laughs> nice <Okay>. to meet you. <laughs> so I, I have so many questions. About- I have said that before. I have so many questions about the MRI and, and how the serial killer became a ghost in the machine. Because well, so obviously the MRI sucked his soul into the internet. Duh. Well, listen, <laughs> I'm, I need, I actually need to, for my own mental health, n- know that and work with the knowledge that hospitals have their own generators. So if there's an, a major, even honestly, so this isn't like a tornado is going through town. It's not... A light shower. It's a storm, right? But we don't see the no, local news cover it. No. So this, the hospital's electricity is knocked out, which I found concerning Ohio. Well, I think what we see time and time again in this film is that lightning is hitting... <laughs> <laughs> like like uh, electricity like uh, like it's hitting posts like uh, like but I don't know if that like it's hitting uh, 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 electricity posts what am I calling them I don't <laughs> know electricity <laughs> post <laughs> wires electricity wire what do you call them yes thing but that- I, I get but what I'm saying is yeah, hospitals have their own emergency yes. like uh, yeah closed I mean, circuit grids about, that they're working they off to, of they have to have the ability to continue life support well but, of but here but here's the thing. The hospital didn't lose power. What happens is he goes into the MRI machine. They scan his entire body, including his soul. That is uploaded to DataNet because that's where the hospital keeps all their files. Okay. And that's why he's like he's sucked into that. Like, so they, but then that could happen to anyone. No. <laughs> no, wait. I think you're right. Well, I, think, I mean, it could, yes. Anybody, but no, I mean, not really. Anybody but yes. who is... Anybody who was I, in I the know that. MRI, Thank you, Paul. Anybody who was in the MRI at that moment would have been sucked into the internet. 
right? Right. So a good person yes. would be sucked in, but if they're not a hacker, they'd be like, uh, I'm lost. I'm lost in a I'm lost in a series of white cross lines and and circles. But he's not a hacker. Yes, he is. Oh, he's a hacker. The serial yeah, killer. Because yes. remember, is yes. also is a serial killer and a hacker. Yeah. Yes. Because but, he's working in the computer store and he's like a, he's a hacker. But and then why not hack those addresses? Why is he obsessed with the hard copies? You know, he's transitioning <laughs> from an analog to a digital world. Is that is that what's making him kill people? He's like, I hate, I hate your analog method of keeping addresses. So everybody needs to die. On some level, this movie posits a, a future where the internet is ubiquitous, everything is going on, and then on other parts of this movie, it's like, well, I better go door to door to talk to this woman. Uh, I'm in front. I can't. I'm not going to call her. God damn it! I will not pick up the phone. I'll drive to her house. And knock on her door, because uh, I think that would be the best way to do it. This okay, guy, that guy, I, I'm obsessed with him. I love that guy. I love Bram. <laughs> I love Bram so much. So Bram Walker? Yes. The craziest thing that Bram Walker does is when he brings a ton of documents to her at a bar and says, and this woman does works for TWA. I mean, she knows nothing about, By the and way, says she hates computers. When I saw her at first, I was like, what a cool look. I wonder if like she's loosening that tie or like that's fashion. And then I realized it was just loosening the tie after work. Cause she looked good with that, like very loose tie. She sure did, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> but he brings all of that to her and says, can you look through every, a list of all of these places that logged on to DataNet at this time and see if anything, I mean, that seems like a really, to ask this woman to cull through that amount of data. And then immediately she's like, Southside Hospital. And she connects information that I think he knows too. She does work that, uh, that it, that that so many different governmental uh, agencies absolutely. should have connected the dots for, and it is based on a nothing. But I will yeah. say the strangest thing in regards to that character that he does that is even stranger is he arrives at his brand new job late in the pouring rain in a convertible. I with I believe a Marlin. Is this how you do it in Ohio? You're like. This rain's not that bad. I, I think that the convertible roof was stuck, uh, just like the pool cover. And Honestly, uh, fuck this movie for doing that to that dog. Wait, I, I, wait. That's where I honestly was like, no, 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 no. But I have nope. a thought. I have a thought about that dog. I have a thought about that dog. Did the serial killer somehow get the tape, the VHS tape of like, dogs learn how to swim because like why was that in the vcr is that a video well, jessica for dogs? walker brought it over oh she brought it over she brought it over because she was like this, okay yeah needling miss- mom who is like and this is for your dog like for the dog to watch <laughs> because I, the dog seemed like I don't the think- dog was like got it <laughs> paul, now i gotta go swimming paul no offense but as somebody, and we talked about it last night, as somebody who did write and create a TV show for cats. <laughs> Meow TV, television for cats, by cats, look it up. You can unfortunately find it. Are you that shocked that there's a dog-based VHS? or? Well, I am like? because the dog-based VHS was like, hey, dogs, swimming simple. It was like, was it to the dogs in English? Like, if you put a dog in a top hat and he was like, I like swimming, I would have gone for it. When the, in the, <laughs> okay, in the very opening scene, in the very first opening scene, yeah. idyllic suburban home, the, the, we don't know it's the guy yet, but a creepy guy in the shadows pulls up. Does he eat a pixie stick? Yes. Why yes. is that? Why isn't he the pixie stick? Because killer? that, I don't know, but honestly, if you're an adult eating a pixie stick, like, you are a ser- serial killer. That oh, I was like, yeah. oh, that's authentic. Because By the way, if, this if is you're a documentary. A kid, here's the deal. If you're, having, if you're a kid, you're having a pixie stick. If you're an adult, you're having a pixie's dick. <laughs> Too far? All right. 
Okay. I want to I want to throw some movie logic at you and see if this makes sense. I believe that this movie opened up with the kid and the credit uh, and the lotto scam and then it went right to the computer store and then it went to the first murder because what happens is we open up on the murder and then as soon as he closes the trunk it starts to rain and I think on the way home from killing those people he gets in a car accident but the movie was too slow so they're like oh shit let's put the murder up front and then walk it backwards. So I believe the first family killed is related to Karen Allen because it would be like this. It would be like a lotto scam, a lotto scam, computer store, lost book, first kill, rainstorm, and then it goes Well, if that's the case, they made the right decision, the editors. Here's, yeah, here's where that fails, I think, is only because then he is singularly only basing it off of her address book and he's right. not the I think they start like that because they're saying he's killing people in other people's Then why is it books. raining so many concurrent nights? Ohio? Ohio? What's the deal? I'm sorry, is this Rainy, Seattle? I guess. Because it did seem like that rain was indicating something. When he goes, when he gets into the accident and is upside down careening and laughing. Okay, so (laughs) just so you know, I spent the rest of the movie in my mind, I was thinking that was a suicide mission. Oh, yeah. He was driving into oncoming traffic. But why? But why, though? But why? Okay, so but why? Because he was on his way to do his favorite thing, kill a family. Right. <laughs> so why right. not take your time? Leisurely drive there. Savor Unless, okay, it. so the only thing I can think, and this is crazy, but I'm like, is it because he overheard his boss selling this new software program and knows that he's going to be obsolete? Like his work, is that it? I'm going to go out here well, on this plane thing. is done, this, so we got to go. When we, we go, see then, Karen Allen's address book, this guy must be so hard. <laughs> it's so thick. He right. could spend five years killing people just but from her I book. But what I think he's understanding, it's like, it's that moment you realize you're a dinosaur in your own industry. Right. You it's know? like the moment in like, Boogie Nights when they say it's going to video and right. Burt Reynolds is like, never. <laughs> that's right. Well, to me, this is how I see it. He had that pixie stick. He murders that family. And on the way home, he's like, oh, that pixie stick is kicking in. If, I, if we go with my original edit of the movie. And then he's like, ah! <laughs> and then he kills himself. Like, I think he's just so jacked up. On sugar? Yeah. It's sugar and murder. <laughs> Take a look. Watch. Think of it like that. He just murdered a family. He just downed a pixie stick. And... <laughs> oh, it's a cemetery. I forgot. He is flying through a cemetery. <laughs> Wait, what? What's happening? Paul? This audience has coordinated some Ohio chants. Okay. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I don't like that you guys are banding together. It doesn't make me feel safe. (laughs) So he's been through, you know, a really serious uh, accident. And he must have, I mean, he does have some major issues. And I imagine trauma to his body. They seem to want to get him into that MRI machine so quickly. And I'm like, don't we need to stop the bleeding? Like, don't. He doesn't I, seem to have cut. any bleeding. They, keep, they describe him as having severe bruising on one side. Well, but and then, Toby Ziegler from West Wing, <laughs> the incredible Richard Schiff, give it up for Richard Schiff, says, oh, we, we got to check his vertebrae, we got to check his brain just to make sure there's no swelling or anything, but they don't seem particularly ups- which like is, worried. Which is crazy because when he first comes in, when the paramedics are taking him in, they, we hear in voiceover a nurse saying, what should we do? Like, and I'm picturing his body is completely mangled yeah. and beyond repair. Well, I mean, is it because he spends most of the accident laughing? That's, and you know what I they mean, always say, the and this is why, by the way, fuck drunk drivers, because they usually do survive because they are 
relaxed. Oh, on, oh uh, you're saying not because he's drunk, you're saying, but because he's no, crazy? No, I'm saying because he's not bracing for impact, yes, totally, that he has yeah, a better yeah, yeah. chance of surviving well, that crash. I'll say this. All they could have done in that scene was have a line like, I can't believe he has not a scratch on him. Well, we better check him in the MRI. That's all you needed. And then he yeah. passes. He, then he dies. Well, he dies because of the electricity. Oh, he's electrocuted in there? Oh, yes. If there was an electricity power surge scenario, would anybody inside the MRI be murdered by electricity? But lightning went from one of those electricity posts all the way (laughs) into the room. Like lightning. There was like lightning bolts. The way that lightning moves in this movie. (laughs) I would argue lightning is the villain of the movie. Elect- I'm sorry, electricity, electricity is electricity. the actual villain of the movie. Can we just talk about the best scene in the whole fucking movie, which is the microwave dinner? And we're talking about electricity. This is, I want to say just very briefly, this movie has a number, a number of classic how did this get made tropes. Oh, yes. One of which, and we just saw one a few nights ago, is a guy... A, a, a man alone who subsists entirely on microwave dinners. Honest to God, we're 11 years into this nightmare. By the way, I said tonight, ca- I, I took an Uber here. Not to flex. Brag. What a flex. Uh, <laughs> to give my wife some extra time. So we didn't, you know, I gave her, I, I got here. And on the way there, he goes, um, what are you in town for? And I'm not going to beat around the bush. I said, oh, we're in town to, to do a show. And he goes, oh, you're going to do stand-up comedy? I said, uh, no, we... we so it's a- so hard to explain. I know. <laughs> the answer to that is yes. Yeah, I know. And I go like this. I say, oh, we were, we're actually doing a podcast a live. And he goes, oh, I didn't know they had open mics at the MGM Northfield. <laughs> and I said, yep, they do. I got here... I got here, I I drove myself here, I parked in the bank, and I had still some of the movie to watch. And so I sat in the rental car, and I'm watching the last, whatever, 12 minutes of the movie, and I'm I'm like, I'm in it, and I'm like, fuck, I'm late, okay, I'm watching the movie. And then like, and I look up, and there's a man outside, and he goes, can I help you? And it was as if I'd been caught jerking off in a parking lot. I was like, ah, I'm in the show! I'm in the show! I was so, I, A, terrified, and B, I reacted like I'd been caught doing something filthy. I was just watching the end of this trash movie. He goes, go to the machine, good flick, you're good to go, buddy. <laughs> All right, so the microwave scene Incredible. is amazing because it starts off with a man going through his freezer, which is full of microwave dinners. Now, he has not... Uh, every, it's almost like a library collection of uh, microwave dinners. And then he takes one. And I no, love that two, he thumbs no, through three. it. three. Yes. He thumbs through it like he's looking for an album. I rewound like it. Like, which album am I going to listen to? I rewound to? it because I thought is where he kept his porn. I thought those are porn VHS tapes. Go, go on. <laughs> what? Because was, of the titles? Well, because I just saw him paging through them and I was like, oh, this guy's like a perv so he keeps his porn in the oh, freezer. Oh, so you thought he was like lo- lovingly flipping through his porn? To be like, what is tonight's main course? <laughs> and, um, and then I rewound You it. married this man. I know. Believe me, I know. Well, it's so interesting, these movies. You know, we are always, before someone gets killed, we have to be able to I don't know, turn against them or feel like they're better off dead, right? So for him, he seems so lonely and there's so many TV dinners. It's just... But he's so he many, happy and then, to me. And then, I know, but then, but he's lonely, and so lonely he's better off die. dead. What's, yeah. What's hard, what's hard about the, the what's, hard, what's hard about the movie is the address book killer, oh God, the address book, we never get insight into the mind of the address book killer, uh, the why. The, there's no exposition as to why he does this, who he was, how this happened, what his MO is, in the way that in so many serial killer movies we do. And we also then, because it seems random, we're watching people we don't know who are truly 
innocent yeah. just be murdered for reasons we don't understand other than that they are next in the address book. Yeah. And, and so as yeah. a movie, well, that's pretty unsatisfying. I do think that there's an attempt, an attempt made to... Um, get into his interior life when the landlady delivers that monologue as she's walking Karen Allen around his apartment. Which, by the way, bold move to show just a stranger like like she's not a cop. She has no business being there. I couldn't believe... I mean, again, this man has killed a, about a thousand a people. 2,400 2, Ohioans? <laughs> like- and she's Three running that like a fucking local imagine? haunted house. She's like, I'll, I'll show you around. At the end yeah. of this movie, they're like, Ohio doesn't have enough people. <laughs> yes. We're just, we're, we're, we're just going to declare bankruptcy. But we're done. she does say, and I was obsessed with that woman and her performance. I thought she was amazing. But she does say something about systems of care, systems of caring, which... So, so then I was like, oh, okay, he's so upset that people have systems of care around them, that he's, that's why he's reaching for address books. But the flaw, of course, in his thinking is that everyone you love is in the address well, book. Well, that's like, the thought, yeah. Right, but the, I don't think that's true. I don't I think mean, that that's true. One's just a babysitter who can't work Saturdays. And Well, she's I'm also sorry. a recycler. She's also a, thank you, June. She's <laughs> also a recycler. Yes. Sure. Hot and girls love sustainability. She's a recycler so true. And, who is uh, not above taking a few bucks to show her <laughs> the top of her boobs. Well, listen, to some she pre-teens. had to do that because we knew she was going to die. But Holy by the way, she shit. also had a DUI. Oh, she did? well, her, she had something. Her license was <laughs> revoked. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, they were. They She's were going to terrible babysitter. By they the were going to expunge her record and pay her thirty seven dollars. Like, she got a record expunged. Like, you can show top boob for that. She's also dead oh. now. What? I'm just saying. Like, there that's is, a nice there, thing. I can't describe to you how much I would have, like, lost my mind to see my babysitter's top boob. Come on. That would have been insane. I, thought- I, that, I was really uncomfortable with that. Those boys, I mean, maybe it's just having kids now, but I'm like, they look like they were 11. Like, I, I was really quite disturbed. I, this is what I was going to say before with the spotlight. That kid's a dick. I don't like that kid. Oh. He's an asshole. Oh, that kid's, that kid is... That kid's no good, he, and he's actually such a dick to his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's, he's like, not a good, you don't want to root for him. I'm like, hey, kill this kid. He's hooked up to the internet all the time. And by the so way. you're advocating killing the kid. Yeah. By the way, though, why wasn't his dad in the address book? I thought for sure. Well, it was we only one get- page, because she only scanned in one page. But he com- had her address No, no, because no, once he's inside, he only had access to one page. Both are true. I see. Both yeah. are true. I he see. He has her address While physically, alive. but when he dies, he only has the one page as the example from the store. Yes, so then he goes and does this so weird program point, of crossing them out or going, ha, 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 ha. It's like, wait, he's like adding program but once information? once he's in there, he can find everybody because... You know, because the camera tells you, you can zoom, he can zoom through any kind of cable or electricity or plug or device or, 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 or dishwasher or micro, anything is available to him. Well, again, back to the microwave. This serial killer. Oh, my okay, God. So this man is making three Salisbury steaks. Three. He puts it in the microwave and then leaves the room. Now, I always understood that like, a microwave dinner is supposed to be quick. Like, you pop it in. You're not, like, leaving. You're not going, I'll come check on that in 45 minutes. That's, like, that's, that's the whole idea I mean, it is that it's quick. It could be, like, seven minutes. Yeah, so he goes to the other room to, you know, queue up whatever he's going to queue up. And in, the, in that moment, that microwave oven explodes and turns the entire kitchen into a microwave. Yeah. The entire kitchen becomes yeah. a microwave? Well, yes, because like, elect- is it a microwave? Or yes. Or is it just throwing out electricity? Because electricity is... No, it's microwave. It's like one of those like... No, because microwave, the, the girl gets bzzit, bzzit, but this guy gets microwave because I know this because if you put a peep, like one of those marshmallow peeps in the microwave, they go... Blah, 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 and that's what everything does. The banana goes... Blah, 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 blah. Like everything was Bubbles. a microwaved... 
And he bubbles. And he bubbles too. Let's but, take a look. Yeah. By the way, such an L.A. kitchen. Oh, yeah. I know it's a microwave because the microwave popcorn starts popping, too. Oh, yeah. I don't like those eggs. Grossest thing in the entire movie bananas walk out of the room walk out of the room my guy your grapes are turning into raisins walk out of the room there are doors did he need to slip and hit his head he looks like he was gonna explode anyway and why so violent and then the rest of the movie is pretty benign like that is a that is like a straight up Final Destination kill. Well, and it's all, yes, and it's also early. This is one yeah. of the first kills. So I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be exactly to your point, Final Destination kind of like, oh, grisly murders. And the, the, actually the first murder, though you don't see a ton of like wh- how it happens, it is pretty grisly. It's he kills haunting. that family and there's yeah. blood everywhere and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be a true horror movie with this. And then, nope, that's not, that's not it. It's just a bunch of nonsense computer well, graphics. I mean, the, when, I mean, I did get upset when they, when they were going to kill the guy who wants to date Karen Allen. And I was upset they made him such a dick. Why don't make him a nice guy? Because I, I think part of the tragedy is like, the nice people are being killed too. Nice Ohio Ohioans. Um, <laughs> but that guy, like that guy's like wants to bring her out to a nice salad bar, a great place for a first date. Oh my God. That made me think like, it did bring me back to 1993, like early nineties. Oh. I feel like the, the craze of we can have salads as dinner. Salad bars and salad also bars. baked potato bars. Oh. oh yeah. Remember when like baked potatoes were like actually so healthy. Yep. You know, it was weird though that her boyfriend that they faked that they faked us out with that crash test dummy sequence. You know, because I was like, if we're gonna kill him, let's kill him that way. The fact that that our serial killer was able to control the hand blowing machine in the bathroom. And I'm just not sure what came out of that. Air? What well, killed him exactly? I, I a fireball. Don't I mean, that's the, the real answer is a fucking fireball. But I don't know how that's possible. Not only... Wow. The, and the movie never answers any of it. The movie, the, the movie obviously knows if we investigate any of this, it falls... It, this is a house of cards. Can we still say that? Um, here's the thing. I think for the movie's sake, they're like, no, anything that has any power, electricity, mm-hmm. anything, the, 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 the Kurt or whatever, Kurt, the, the, the bad guy in the internet, they're basically banking on nobody knows what the internet is. So the internet is available, has control over literally anything, any machine. At which point, Karen Allen should take her son and her mother and anybody else and go to the woods. Yeah. Well, they do the, the, the next best thing, which is tape up the electrical outlets. Yeah. <laughs> and we get to see that multiple times in the film, electrical outlets with tape over them, because, well, are we saying that even if the tape, could he not get through the tape? Well, I don't know. I think it was more of a reminder to themselves, like, don't even don't plug it, don't think e- about it. Well, but then she's, at the moment where they unplug everything, at the mom's house, Jessica Walter's house, they unplug R.I.P. a legend. They, they unplug everything. They're like, don't plug anything in. Don't do anything. Bah, 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 bah. And then Karen Allen's like, okay, I got to go. She's like, I'm going to go to Walker or whatever. And she's driving, and her cell phone rings in her car, and she's like, ha, ha. She's happy. <laughs> she's happy the cell Hello? phone is ringing. She doesn't think yeah. to herself, oh, this is the exact methodology with which the killer has been communicating with me and my Well, son. no, phones work on phone lines and cords work on cord lines. Yeah. And that's, the, <laughs> that's the, the difference. You see, we were uh, simpler people I, back then. The- no, I was really fascinated by what happened to Jessica Walters after the swatting incident. 
So she was in shock. I mean, I guess I don't know, medical professional, what shock looks like, but it looks like sure. locked in syndrome to me. Honestly, it looks like just death. And I was like, how Karen do they define was like, shock versus like a coma? Like, uh, do you think that Karen Allen was just in denial and that her mother know. had passed? Honestly, and she was it made like, me question. I know you're in shock. <laughs> They needed to figure out a way to show her caring, but also get the fuck out of there. Because also they're in another right. place where they could be completely attacked. I mean, it seems like at this point, the character's getting smarter and smarter, uh, that he could go and just follow them anywhere. But he seems to be like constantly lost. Like, oh, wait, they're there? Oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. Like he doesn't, like, just get him in the hospital. Get anybody anywhere. It's yeah. so, it would seem so easy because he has so much control. Yeah. He can he can light fires. He can electrocute people. He can do he can cause you know both the dishwasher to overload and the electricity to be. Well, this is a question. He also can infiltrate dreams because what Karen Allen nightmares about that this man's like I mean first of all weird church to be cremating right in front so of the upsetting. entire. Uh, Boy, I wished so much that this had not been a dream scene. Oh. I was like, I was saying, let oh this my God. be the movie. <laughs> we needed it to be, but I mean, but she's dreaming before she knows, I think, that he has control over electric. She's dreaming that he's controlling the electric so that she can see the future. Or yes. she can, or she can, she was, a, she's, everyone's ahead of it. Everyone's ahead of this. And then the one who solves it is the boy who just looks at a piece of paper and goes, oh, it's uh, the address book. Oh, they're going in order. Yeah. Oh, he's a genius. There's fucking four names on there and three have been killed. The movie does have some things, though. And what helps it, I think, for everybody is there are some things that are tethered to reality. How many of us at some point in our life have, were at an ATM and we were overdrawn and blast doors came down from the ATM, covered the entire thing and said, that's it. As if it was trying to protect itself from a nuclear annihilation. I was like, I mean, what is this now? Like for <laughs> real, like. <laughs> I, I do want to talk about the end before we go to the crowd and, and ask them some questions. So this is a movie that climaxes with the villain going out of the internet, like we said, as a balloon animal in these like little like DNA strands. The plan is to like um, his, take down his atoms, but I feel like he's not, he doesn't have atoms anymore because he's in the thing, but okay, whatever. But then he becomes this bits and bites and whatever, and then the kid body slams him. Like, he body slams bits and they, bites. They also do a thing which is like, well, the only, the, the thing, the, the only thing we can do against any threat is shoot it with a gun. Yeah. And it's like, Smith this, and Wesson. Is, this is a digital entity. Well, I'm still confused by the plan. So, he, Bram releases a virus into the internet? Yeah. Okay, that that shuts down the four other outlets of the internet because the internet has four outlets and he closes the exit he's signs on four of he's them. He's trying to corral the bad guy into... The magnet. The, the big... The, the, uh, the super collider. Is it a super collider? What is it? Sure. A uh, magnet. Yeah. Big magnet. It's a big giant magnet that is uh, some sort of you know, super collider or whatever so that they can kill it so that he's like siphoning it into one place, which is successful... So, okay. Well, what they didn't account for is him to be shooting out of all <laughs> of the all ports. The, yeah. Like, and like Play-Doh. If I'm them, there's nothing to, there's no value in just like turning off the electricity. No, they got to shock it out. Okay, because he wouldn't die necessarily if well, they just turned the it thing. off. Well, here's the thing. Here's the reality. There is a, a prolific serial killer who is now exists in the digital realm and is able to kill seemingly anyone anywhere. And the people that are trying to stop him are a suburban mother, <laughs> son, and a disgraced hacker who can't even get his convertible shot. And here's the thing. How do they do it? The kid's a hacker. Does he hack? No. The mom has a gun. 
cool? The mom is shooting a computer program? And then it all is figured out. The hacker goes, yeah, magnets. Like that magnet. No, doesn't say magnets. She oh. comes up the with magnets. The mom says magnets because the kid said, don't put that magnet on my computer disc. Jeez. Like nobody, like literally nobody has. This is a, an epic failure on every level for people to be able to stop. It's like, so, honestly, the serial killer deserves to win. He deserves to kill every person in Ohio. Let's go to the audience. Let's go to the audience and see who has some questions. All right. Um, okay, so what's your name? Megan. Megan, welcome. What's your question? So we talked about top boob for the babysitter. She received $37.28 to unbutton her top, which is the equivalent of about $77 now adjusted for inflation. Do we feel that's a fair deal? And by the way, wait, wait. You have to also say they're going to get lower her insurance and expunge her, uh, her DUI. So that, so for, that's a lot. Well, She's I mean, I think lot. not to be a, such a capitalist, but it's like, what's the market going to bear? It was I an mean, offer that was right in front of her and I'm just she saying, took it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I have a crisp 100 in my pocket. <laughs> Before I go to my next question, June, I have two people here for you. Get up, Ernest. We got some earnest right here. Uh, Ooh, you do dueling love to see earnest. it. I don't know. Can you do an earnest without good, a hat? Oh, good. Oh, it's good earnest and bad earnest. Oh, here it's sexy earnest and and and. Sure is. Oh, I love this. Right. Well done. All right. So, uh, what's your name? And what's your question? Uh, my name is Adam, but I'm also Dr. Guts on Discord. Oh, hey, welcome, Dr. Guts. Uh, this is oh. great. I get to meet Dr. Guts. This Dr. Is Guts on whatever Discord is. <laughs> We know Dr. Guts. We love Dr. Guts. Okay, welcome, Dr. Guts. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask, there's, when they visit Bram's hotel room, he's got a nude painting on the wall, and I wasn't sure if that was the hotel's decor or if he is decorating out. Because, yeah, because, no, I'm looking at it right now. Yes, that's a woman's bare ass, and I'm going to say it's his because the Marlin is also up there. The Marlin was in the trunk of the car or in the uh, convertible, so I think he is putting erotic art on his walls, (laughs) and what a great uh, observation. It's a velvet painting of a bare, naked ass. Take some candy. And he is the love interest? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, you guys are really. like, you guys I mean, are like, we're oh, dancing want... around it, but the movie doesn't imply that they got together. No, but it implies that there's a connection. Yeah, sure. Um, but I want to say this. You guys are like, oh, Karen Allen deserves so much better. She deserves so much better. Like, this guy lives in a fucking motel with velvet nude pictures. The other guy's a fucking scientist for Toyota. But he's you know, listen, one the- she can deserve better than Bram Walker, too. We're just saying she deserves better. How de- about yeah. the guy who runs the computer store? Listen, she deserves Indiana Jones. That's right. Yeah, that's our standard. That's that. that I'm so, I, and that's Indiana terrible, Jones but- deserves her. Uh, your name, your question. Uh, my name's Thomas. Um, so he's been addressed book killing for three years, but don't you think you have a lot of friends and relatives from out of state? So is this a national concern or is he just kind of half asking it and just doing what's local? Boy, would that be great great question. Boy, would that be great? Because yes, of course, in your address book, you are, it's, it's, you're, you know, it's alphabetical. So yeah, you could have people all over the country, all over the world. I know, um, and the Pacific Northwest is usually like blamed for, you know, most serial killers and serial killings. And maybe it was the address book killer the whole time. Yeah. And maybe Ohio should be blamed for this, for a, a lot of the deaths all over the country. Uh, clearly, we had an opinion about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. I want you to know my five-star review about a killer who blew a fuse. Does your microwave need maintenance? It just fried your work acquaintance. You're in mild danger. No more time for denial. So go and unplug your shit and find a big-ass magnet. Thank God one's plausibly in the middle of Ohio. (laughs) 
And although the killer isn't able to maintain a form that's stable, it doesn't mean he won't try to poke your eyes. Poke your eyes, how will you survive? Well, Paul Shear, share my review with the nerds out there, cause they, they, they ought to know. Amazing, great job. Medical professional. All right, great job. Incredible. All right, there are uh, 111 total reviews. 66% are five star. How? And this one, uh, written by Wendell, starts like this. Classic 1990s sci-fi thriller. As it says, ghost in the machine. There is a ghost in the machine. (laughs) But it's actually in the computer and they need to find a way to get rid of it. One to watch with your feet up. Five stars. <laughs> what does it mean, feet up? Like, you're enjoying it so much? Yeah. Or you're going to be scared that you're... Oh, so that you don't get electrocuted. Oh. Because everybody who gets electrocuted, their, their feet are... The, the, the water or the whatever gets That's so... True. If you keep your feet up, you're going you're gonna to gonna survive. Well, this is a, uh, interesting you brought that up because Edwin T. Gee in 2016... E.T.G.? E.T.G. in 2016, December 22nd, right around Christmas, chimes in to say, classic horror. After watching this, you'll want to unplug everything in your home. <laughs> a very unique way to be a slasher through electricity. I mean, you got Chucky, who used a doll... And others somehow came back to life. But this killer gets in the electricity. (laughs) Plus, you can't go wrong with classic 90s style. This movie, you must own. Five stars. Classic horror. And finally, Brian Bagby, March 30th, 2015, writes, I'm satisfied with this movie. Five stars. I often don't read from, um, like, the Catholic Review website, but (laughs) I wanted to quickly just point out that it got a lot of negativity here, you know, for blasphemy, for evil, for gross immorality. Uh, But the other thing was this. Politically correct dialogue referring to Nixon-era protests. They did not like that the mom was an, an anti-Nixon protest. And was one, so of, was the people, Bram. Was one yeah. of the people that got naked and, yeah, and jumped in the, in the, in the, yeah. the fountain the, or the, the, the reflecting is, yeah. pool. Yes, thank you. Um, this movie cost $12 million. Opening weekend, it made one. Worldwide gross, $5 million. Top three movies in 94, Lion King, Forrest Gump, and True Lies. This movie was beat by Street Fighter, Color of Night Jr., The Shadow, Disclosure, and Time Cop. It only beat Double Dragon, which you did not do in the show. And the tagline for this movie is, last night, a serial killer died, dot, dot, dot. I don't know if that's going to get me to go to the movies. (laughs) Seems like the movie's over. (laughs) There's no movie. The movie, and I just looked it up because I was like, oh, I wrote something in my notes that I was like, that I just saw, and I was like, oh, wait, what is that? So the movie structurally is, you said 93, 94? Uh, 1993. Okay. So this came out on New Year's Eve. Structurally is basically putting like a virtual reality or an internet skin on T2. Right. Because Karen Allen is basically, it's basically the story is they're being chased by somebody and it's a kid and a mom. And at the end, she's like, get your hands off my fucking son and shoots him. There's so many, I feel like T2, like moments, but I was and in a way that I was like, oh, I feel like that's how they sold it. They were like, it's T2 plus virtual reality. And it's nonsense it is not that right because it loses all guns, the things that we like from t2 don't matter nothing yeah nothing about t2 is none of the fun of it and it's not fun even remotely anyway. so i guess my question to you is would you recommend this movie no so it's hard 
I will say because uh, we're on a tour right now with this podcast. It's hard to believe, but we are, and we're we've doing open mic rooms across seen, the country. <laughs> we've seen such terrible things in the last two days. I mean, last night, what we saw. How I, you are so be, lucky. You that, you really are. We should we all didn't say make a prayer you of gratitude. The Oogie loves. Oogie loves made me physically ill. I love that. I, I felt nauseous. Slept, I haven't slept in days. Yeah. So. Because my when head. I close my eyes, <laughs> all I see is Toofy lo- go- Oogie Love. Don't even say it, Gooby Jason. Oogie Love. Don't even Choosy. say it. J. Edgar. Please. Shloofy. <laughs> Wendy, w- Wendy Window. These are real characters <laughs> from a nightmare that we lived through. It was so hard and it was so nauseating. The experience that when I watched this today, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so I can't, I can't recommend or not recommend because I know I'm not well. Yeah. I will say that I recommend it with a heavy fast forward because the death scenes, like they took my breath away. The fireball, the microwave, the baby in danger, the top boob, all these are moments. But if you watch it on like two speed, but I listen to my audiobooks on, that's what you Wait, can kind of- Wait, what? You listen to audiobooks times two? Times 2.5. He listens to everything times two. 2.5, Jason. 2.5 audio? I so build insane. it up. Once I get familiar with the voice, I'm like 2.1, 2.2. I know somebody, I know somebody who, who reads a, a heart, heart, the book, while listening to the audiobook and then increases the speed until they are speed reading and so they're processing a book two ways. Wow. So that they are, that. They're, they're internalizing the book both by reading it and by hearing I it. I want to do that. Oh, it, it, and, and it is like a, apparently a game changer for like loading information into your head. Just like the serial killer. Just like this podcast. Can I just say one more thing? I want to thank everybody for your patience in rescheduling yes, this show. So I know it was so super difficult much. and really fucked a lot of people's plans up. Thank you, everybody, for your generosity, your well wishes, and your patience in coming back. This was well worth it. I saw thank your you. phone, too. Eat shit, Cleveland. Happy Halloween. Thank you, everybody. Great work, Jasons. Great work, Jason. Great work, Evergood's Carryology. You're the best. Go home. That brings us to the end of The Ghost in the Machine. If you are looking for more content to devour while you're driving, at your job, or just stuck in a relative's house that you don't want to be at, Or maybe you're just alone and you're like, you know what? I finally have some time to catch up on some stuff. Let me throw something at you. Uh, Rob Hubel and I hosted this giant event. It was the front page of Twitch for two days. It was called Celebrity Yard Sale, where we invited celebrities to come on and uh, sell their junk. And we packed it full of great people like Kamel Nanjiani, Carl Tart, Lauren Lapkus, musician Ben Lee. Uh, We had so many great people. Eva Anderson played our appraiser. Rob Riggle showed up at the end. We gave away a car. It was massive. Two days, four hours. You can watch it all on my YouTube channel or if you are inclined, watch it on Twitch at twitch.tv slash friendzone. If you don't know what Twitch is, don't worry. Don't stress yourself out about it. That's why I put it on my YouTube page. But that's four hours of extra material with some of your favorite people. I think you'll really dig it. And it's not super visual, so you could actually listen to it and get what is going on. Um, people, that is the end of this episode. I want to give a shout out to um, the great wash machine in this movie and as a matter of fact we have immortalized that wash machine with agitate explode and die with its very own shirt just go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hdtgm you know how it works and it is uh, a great looking i think actually a great looking sticker put it on your own washing machine let 
let the next person who lives in your house deal with it. Um, anyway, a big shout out to everybody. I hope you have a great year. Thank you for a great live show. And as we say goodbye to Devin, we also say hello to our brand new senior engineer, Alex Gonzalez. Welcome, Alex, to the show, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.